This is Matthew Cratter's Bitcoin University. Today, I want to talk about Bitcoin knots hitting 15% of the network. It looks like bull markets are popping up everywhere these days, obviously in Bitcoin and in the ocean mining pools hash rate hitting new highs, as well as Bitcoin knots breaking past 15%. We can see this right here. It's more than 15% of the network as I'm recording this. I haven't seen anything like it. Michael Dunworth says, I haven't seen anything like this in a startup entrepreneurship before, I don't think. Bitcoin Knots has had 700% growth in 100 days under the most adversarial conditions at a standing start against a moving freight train with one 1,000th the capital injection. So this is all really good news. If you don't know what is Bitcoin Knots, it's the best way to run a Bitcoin node so that you can verify that your Bitcoin is real and so that you also don't need to trust someone else's node. Bitcoin Knots gives you much more configurability than Bitcoin Core. Bitcoin Knots really makes you the king of your own mempool rather than forcing you to rely on the whims of Bitcoin Core devs as Bitcoin Core does. Bitcoin Knots allows you to fight back as well against malicious mining pools, crypto VCs, and Bitcoin Core devs who are working together to make it easier to spam the network. Who's getting rich from Bitcoin spam? I'll put a link in the description notes to this video below, but it's basically the malicious mining pools and the crypto VCs who put the spam on chain and then try to sell it. If we take a look at Bitcoin Knots listening and non-listening nodes, we're at nearly 10,000 nodes. And as Lysander points out here, when you piss off 10,000 people, you know you really messed up, messed up. So this has been unprecedented, this move from Bitcoin Core to Bitcoin Knots. And I know many of you have been part of it, and I'm grateful for that. Here's how to join the Bitcoin Knots revolution if you haven't done it yet, how to spin up a Bitcoin Knots node. You can either buy a personal server, you can build one, you can run it on your laptop. So I will put all of these resources in the description notes below to teach you how to run a Bitcoin Knots so you can become one of those 10,000 people who are running them. If you're finding this video interesting so far, I just ask you really briefly here to help to support this channel's educational mission. Hit the subscribe button. That does really help. Leave a like, leave a comment, question, suggestion for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So do filters in Bitcoin actually work? We keep coming back to this question. And I thought Super Testnet put together an interesting site that tests this. He looks at basically a sub one sat per VBI transactions and he's been finding they're less than 0.02%. That's been ticking up over time. We're currently at 1%. And I'm going to explain in a moment what this means. You basically have this minimum relay transaction fee called min relay TX fee. This is yet another Bitcoin filter that's present even in Bitcoin core nodes as well as being present in Bitcoin not node software. So before passing on a transaction along to another node, most Bitcoin core and Bitcoin knots nodes by default We'll check every unconfirmed transaction, i.e. transactions that haven't yet been included in a block in mind. They'll check every unconfirmed transactions that's being relayed around the network to see if that transaction is paying a transaction fee of at least one Satoshi, one sat per V-byte, which is a measurement of data. If the transaction fee is less than one sat per V-byte, the node will not relay. In other words, will not pass this on to another node, will not pass on this transaction. This is a sort of built-in protection against denial of service DOS attacks on Bitcoin, where an attacker could produce thousands or even millions of transactions that pay a zero transaction fee and overwhelm nodes with them. The super nest testnet in that chart has been checking every block to see how many sub one sat per VBI transactions actually got mined and included in a block, and the number has been rounding errors. We saw here 0.02%. Uh, percent. It has been ticking up over time over the last few blocks for reasons that we're going to talk about right now. This is a helpful chart for that. This shows you that filters, they don't eliminate everything, but they help most of the things not to be included in the blockchain. So this is the number of transactions paying more than one sat per VByte in the blockchain. This is the number play, paying less than one sat per VByte. So that's a graphical illustration of basically this same thing. In summary, even the pro-spam people in Bitcoin all run nodes that by default do not relay sub one sat per VByte transactions, at least not yet. Of course, you can still send your transaction directly to a mining pool, as spammers have been doing recently. We've been seeing these rune inscriptions or rune stone inscriptions. I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but these have been having sub one sat per VByte transaction fees, in this case 0.61 sats per VByte, so less than a full Satoshi 
transaction fee for that amount of data. The problem with direct submissions to a mining pool like this, because these had to be either sent across some relay service or, or submitted directly to the miners, because they're, one, they're less than one sat per V-byte, they would not be relayed by nodes. The problem with these kind of direct submissions to a mining pool, you may end up, end up or the mining pool may end up losing a block in a race condition where two mining pools find a block at the same time, and nodes are able to verify the block that contains transactions that they've already seen because they've been relayed around the network and ended up in their mempools, but they're not able to as quickly verify transactions that were direct submissions to the mining pool because they haven't seen them yet. And so they'll, they'll need to request these transactions from the mining pool. And this slows down the verification and propagation of that block, which may mean that a competitive block that was mined by a competing mining pool will actually be added to the chain by most nodes first. So by trying to get a few extra sats and transaction fees, because these direct submissions always cost more because of this risk to mining pools, trying to get a few extra extra sats and transaction fees in a situation like this in a race condition, a mining pool could end up losing the entire block subsidy, that 3.125 Bitcoin, which really isn't worth it for a few sats. Also, undercutting transaction fees, as seems to be happening now with mining pools, is obviously not something that's good for a mining pool's bottom line. It's fine now since most of the mining reward comes from the block subsidy, that 3.125 Bitcoin. But as the block subsidy continues to get halved every four years, and as miners rely more and more on transaction fees for their revenues, there could be a race to the bottom as transaction fees fall as low as, I believe they can go as low as 0.01 sats per V-byte, even on-chain, and they're obviously lower on Lightning. Will nodes change their defaults, their relay defaults here, to allow these sub-1 sat per V-byte transaction fees to be relayed? Quite possibly, since node runners want to pay as low a transaction fee as possible when they transact on-chain, so it would be more in the interest of nodes rather than miners. Low transaction fees are also great for the UTXO set. They allow for consolidation of very small UTXOs, so they can help to solve UTXO bloat, though of course they risk creating more, even smaller UTXO bloat. So this is sort of the paradox and the game theory about it. And also will lower transaction fees also enable cheaper spam? Unfortunately, they will, unless lots of nodes are running the kind of spam filters that come with Bitcoin knots, and unless the Bitcoin community makes it clear to the spammers that they're not welcome on our chain and they should go to other blockchains. So again, I'll put a link in the description notes below how you can run your own Bitcoin knots node and help to protect the Bitcoin network from spam. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video, and let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.